Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. We are surrounded by books, so we know that means it's either a book haul or a book recommendation. Today I do have book recommendations for you guys. For as per usual, so the goal was like country, cowboy, small town, romances to, to do that vibe. So these two are by the same author. They're both the start to different series. And then this one is a start to a series. And this one is the second book to a series. It's an interconnected series. So I would say read it in order. There we have it. So we're going to start with Flawless because I love her. So this is Flawless by Elsie Silver. It's like brothers and their ranch. And this one is he's actually a bull rider, but it still fits in the country small town scene. And then like some of the other brothers are cowboys. And then one of the brothers is a hockey player. But whatever but this one's my favorite it sets the bar really high for me for the entire series i have some because i took from that shelf as you can see um that's like two more books in the series i've read the entire series but i don't have two physical copies for some of the other books that i do plan to get but yeah we're gonna start off with this beauty she's amazing it's my favorite we love her five star rating the rules were simple. Keep his hands off his agent's daughter and stay out of trouble. But now he's stuck with her. There's only one bed and well, rules are made to be broken. Red Eaton is the face of professional bull riding. The golden boy, or at least he was until it all blew up in his face after a public brawl. Now his agent says he has to clean up his image and sticks Red with his ball busting daughter for the rest of the season as full time supervision. But Rhett doesn't need a goddamn babysitter, especially one with skin-tight jeans, a sexy smirk, and a mouth she can't stop running. A mouth he can't stop thinking about. And he quickly learns that Summer Hamilton isn't just another conquest. She sees the man behind the mask and she doesn't run. She pulls him closer, even when she shouldn't. Summer says this means nothing. Rhett says this means everything. She says there are boundaries they shouldn't cross, that Red's reputation can't take any more hits and neither can her damaged heart. Red says he's going to steal it anyway. Y'all, they're so cute. So we have a lot of tropes in this one. Obviously there's the one bed trope that comes up and then boss's daughter is another. Not particularly enemies to know, enemies to lovers because it's not really that kind of you could say workplace um romance a bit since he's supposed to be like her you know watch her innocence but they get thrown together when Rhett gets in this dispute so and when they like first meet he doesn't have that instant click of who summer is um Cause it's like you know when they do and like the movies or whatever you just see someone from behind and you're saying x y and z and then they turn around and it's like that realization hits you that's what happens for them but it's kind of the more he gets to know summer the more he wants to continue to get to know her on a deeper level aside from just working and it's the same with summer but i think she's a little bit more hesitant because she is a female in the workplace so she doesn't want it to seem like she's done x y and z to get where she is especially when she's already working for her dad that's already kind of like a strike against her so she's getting these feelings for red but at the same time she's trying to compose herself like get her job done and she's already had like heartbreak in the past so she's really like i'm not trying to put myself through this again and let that break me because she doesn't have it in her anymore and Rhett is basically trying to reassure her the entire time 
that it wouldn't be him that he's not gonna do that he deeply cares for her y'all Rhett is a man I'll say that he I'm telling you he's my favorite Eaton um brother like absolutely love him him and Summer so so good so good y'all can't even I don't want to say too much I'm just trying to give like a little bit of crumbs here and there so y'all go read it yourselves because I'm telling you it's pretty much like a quick read too like it's not even that thick it's actually one of the smaller books in the series if I'm being honest there are some that are a little bit thicker this one has 393 pages it's it's not that much in comparison to others because I don't know I don't know what your your page rate is for me I think romance books like 400 and under is a good a good you know point because what are we doing after x amount of pages like now you're just randomly doing stuff that's not the case with this one please go read flawless by Elsie Silver love her I really do she's gonna do it for me every single time when it comes to a small town cowboy romance which is why I have another book that I'm recommending. This is Wild Love by Elsie Silver. This is the start to another series. And if I'm correct, it's supposed to be um, focusing on single dads throughout the entire series. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure every male um, main character is a single dad in this series. I'm not sure how many books it's supposed to have. Two is coming out. Why do I feel like September? That could be wrong. Maybe I just wanted to be September. But I'm pretty sure two is coming out before the end of um, this year. It's just another one that's so good. And also, I am kind of a sucker for a single dad romance. Those are always super, super cute. I love it. Give it to me. And I will say this is on the thicker side in comparison to Flawless and also like for Elsie Silver, I think this series is pretty sick, pretty thick. She also has another um, like Cowboy Small Town series that she did before this one and the other one that I showed you, she's actually re-releasing them and new covers. I do plan to get those. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it. She's been driving him wild for years. The good kind of wild, the bad kind of wild, but mostly the kind of wild that comes with wanting your best friend's little sister and knowing you can't have her. Forbes may have labeled Ford Grant the world's hottest billionaire, but all he cares about is escaping the press and opening a recording studio in gorgeous small town Rose Hill. Something that comes to a screeching halt when he ends up face to face with a young girl who claims he's her biological father. Now he spends his days balancing business with parenting a sullen 12 year old, all while trying to desperately keep his hands the hell off his best friend's sister, Rosie Belmont. After living in the city, Rosie came blasting back into town like a storm. Beautiful, messy, and chaotic, and one-eyed, desperate plea for a job is all it takes for Ford to hire her. He vows to keep her at arm's length, tries to stick to scowls and grumpy one-liners, but with her verbal sparring is a type of foreplay. Friction that soon turns into blistering heat. Ford knows damn well he couldn't cross this line, but shouldn't and can't are two very different things. And the only thing he truly can't do is resist her. Yes, 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 yes. So obviously if you can tell the trope is best friend's little sister, we love that one. And also a little bit of enemies to lovers just because they've tried to distance themselves because of best friend's little sister. Okay, so, oh, and also the characters um, in this book were introduced and mentioned in this one. They're like, you don't have to read this uh, series before this one, but like some of the characters are mentioned in Crisscross, just to put that out there. So, for he has built himself up he's x y and z but now he's back home and he's trying to do this recording studio and then 
Rosie comes back. She has her reasons, but like she's been away from home. She came back. There's a lot going on. She's trying to get her life, life together. Before she kind of has run-ins with Ford, this little girl comes knocking on his door and is basically like, you're my biological father. I'm your daughter. I need some help. That situation is explained in further detail, but she ends up on his doorstep basically and you know they figure things out in a sense to start so now ford is thrust into a position of being a father and as it says the the girl is um as it says the girl is already a teenager so he's trying to balance out now trying to do his business what he had planned to do and being a father along with i don't want to say so i lost y'all for a bit but i don't know how long i lost y'all but um ford is trying to get his business together what he was trying to do prior as well as taking care of this daughter he just found out he had and the reason he has a daughter is because he went to his bank bank when he was younger because he needed some money didn't really think anything of it kind of forgot about it and then she shows up on the doorstep and then it kind of clicks for him so he's trying to be a father he's trying to do his business and he's also trying to avoid rosie it's a lot for him to handle right now and literally rosie is just trying to basically build her life back up get her pieces together she's coming home because you know that's the place where she wants to be right now after some things happen again that is explained further in the book so ford and rosie have this kind of push and pull thing going on because again ford is trying to show restraint because um his best friend's little sister and i do believe they have an age gap i don't think it's like huge but there is that to think about and then he's also trying to think about the daughter he had he has now like how all of that is going to go into play so there's a little bit of drama going on not like that much but it was cute it was cute i really enjoyed it it also introduced the um male main character for the next book again i'm pretty sure it comes out in september i think um so i'm really looking forward to that honestly anything elsie silver writes i'm gonna read it but generally that's also i love country cowboy small town romances i love them eat them up come to me yes and again like i said this is on the thicker side of things it has 455 pages and i also think this might be one of elsie's thickest books i haven't read uh like all of the previous her first series so i'm not quite sure yet also this was another five star read so the next one oh i really enjoyed this one too um it happened one summer by tessa bailey love tessa bailey love 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 this is my all-time favorite book by her it's actually the first book i read by her this is more of the small town romance side it has grumpy sunshine vibes we just we love it over here and this one has a second book it's more of like it's sisters so this one cover covers the oldest sister and then the second one covers the younger sister didn't really like that one as much this one kind of just set the bar so high i felt myself only trying to read more about our main characters here in the second one uh but you might like it so read that one do do with this information which you will but this is definitely my favorite in that series and top three tessa bailey book for sure Okay, 
Kuiper Bellinger is a fashionable and influential and her reputation as a wild child means the paparazzi are constantly on her heels. When too much champagne in an out of control rooftop party land Piper in the slammer, her stepfather decides enough is enough. So he cuts her off and sends her and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar in Westport, Washington. Piper hasn't even been in Westport five minutes when she meets big bearded sea captain Brendan Taggart, who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. So what if Piper can't do math and the idea of sleeping in a shabby apartment with bunk beds gives her hives? How bad could it really be? She's determined to show her stepfather and the hot grumpy local that she's more than just a pretty face, except it's a small town and everywhere she turns, she bumps into Brandon. The fun loving socialite and the gruff fisherman are polar opposites, but there's an undeniable attraction shimmering between the two. Piper doesn't want any distractions, especially feelings for a man who sails off into the sunset for weeks at a time yet she reconnects with her past and begins to feel at home in Westport. Piper starts to wonder if the cold, glamorous life she knew is what she truly wants. LA is calling her name, but Brendan and this town full of memories may have already caught her heart. I can't, I love Piper and Brendan. They're absolutely so cute. Again, grumpy and sunshine vibes and if you don't know what a dive bar is, from my understanding of reading small town cowboy romances, it's literally just a bar. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's just a bar. So, I don't know if it's, it's I've never been to one, so I can't really tell you too much, but that's what it seems like. <sighs> so, Piper, she gets into this little incident, her stepfather is like basically i'm gonna teach you and your sister a lesson you're gonna go to your hometown you're gonna stay there get your life together and we'll see what happens from there so piper and her sister know you know like some of the history and stuff of their hometown but like for a handful of their life they have been elsewhere so they're accustomed to a certain lifestyle so when they do get to westport it's gonna like a culture shock a little bit especially for piper so now they're trying to not so much like fit in but get themselves together as it mentions they're taking over their birth father's dive bar and that's also how she like meets brendan because although they haven't been there. The bar has been up and running. Like people have been taking care of the bar. It has been used. But now they're coming to basically like claim that their father, this is his bar and now it's theirs. And so people are a little shocked that they're coming back. But it's also like some of those times where it's like, oh, you, you know, when people would say, um i remember you when you were just a baby that type of situation so they had some of the people there i was like oh yeah i remember you when you were just a baby obviously it's been x amount of years so they don't and they didn't really have a super close relationship with their birth father so along with this coming along with them coming to westport they're also learning more about their father more about the past life before they kind of got a new life in a sense which it's not like things were sketchy or anything there is a story behind that as well and it is explained um about their birth father you know stepfather all of that and how they came to be and whatnot so you do learn that but that is part of their journey as well in Westport and with Piper now essentially owning the dive bar she gets a lot of interactions with brendan and brendan it's you know in his head like piper's not gonna last long she's not so much uppity but her vibe doesn't match the vibe of westport again that could be because he's just grumpy so they have a push and pull as well because along with it being grumpy sunshine i think in certain points it could be like 
not a strong enemies to lovers but a little bit of enemies to lovers only because brandon pushes piper in a sense it's like piper is so nice she's just trying to do what she does and brandon is like pushing her away saying x y and z so that's why we're putting enemies to lovers in the mix but again it's not like a super strong um enemies to lovers in there so kind of as i start having more interactions because it is a small town you're only going to see like 100 people if they start to have you know conversations they start to get to know each other and i think brendan sees a different side of piper as mentioned like the whole reason she ends up in westport is because of like publicity wise so it's already kind of the perceived um notion of piper and as he's seen her in westport he's seen a different side of her and i would say the same for piper because like when piper and brendan kind of first meet it is like a bit rocky it's icy not the best of vibe so the more she gets to know brendan the more she learns about him cute and this is also like a pretty quick read brendan i think a lot of tessa bailey books are like quick reads um it's up to you but it only has 397 pages so so good love it top three tessa bailey book and honestly tessa has so many like i have a few oh you can't even see they're behind mm -mm, that's oh this way they're behind those but i have a stack of some of her books i this is another author she writes it i'll read it we love her over here and then our last book is swift and saddled by lila sage i would just like to say the covers in the series are so cute but this is book two in the series uh, they're interconnected so again i would say read them in order so if you haven't read the first one maybe skip this um I've read the first one. I just don't have a physical copy of it. I intend to get a physical copy, but I don't. So for the purpose of our video, we're doing the second one, but I would recommend the first one as well. Um, first one is my favorite, but I enjoyed this one too. <laughs> um, and the third one, I want to say September for whatever reason, maybe because it's going to be, it's getting close to September, but I'm pretty sure the third one is coming out fairly soon, maybe September, October, but I know it's coming and I don't know if it's just going to be three books in the series or if there's going to be more, but it is a series, fairly quick read as well. She's the city girl who refuses to be saddled with a man. He's the cowboy who wants her anyway. The next installment in the Rebel Blue Ranch series from the beloved author of Done and Dusted. The last thing Ada Hart needs is a man to take care of her. Not anymore. After failing out of her interior design program and the disaster that was her short-lived marriage, Ada has clawed her way up from rock bottom. Now the only person she trusts is herself and that has gotten her further than ever before. She has her own business and one of the largest ranches in Wyoming just hired her for the most important project of her career. When Ada arrives in Metal Lark, she finds herself in a dive bar where she can't seem to shake the eyes of a handsome cowboy. When she leads him to the back of the bar, he leaves her with a kiss that most people could only fantasize about. She almost forgets that she'll never see him again, except it turns out he's her new boss. Weston Ryder is a happy guy, even happier now that the mystery woman from the bar is the interior designer for his dream project on his family's branch. He feels like he hit the jackpot. Too bad she wants absolutely nothing to do with him outside of work. Ada is convinced that the pull she feels towards Wes will go away, but Wes can't stop thinking about her. Even though walls are coming down around the Rebel Blue Ranch, Ada's walls are firmly in place. Can Ada and Wes make it through this project without giving in, or will they both put their dreams on the line for a chance at love? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so tropes, we have a workplace romance, obviously, love to see it, and then um, Grumpy Sunshine and 
our girl main character Ada is our grumpy and then Wes is our sunshine. So once again we have the mention of a dive bar. A bar. So Ada has some stuff going on with her life. She ends up landing this interior design job in Wyoming. Great. Packs it up. She heads on down there. So before she actually gets into working she goes to the dive bar you know just like chillax and that's where she meets Wes but that is not really like they're stopping and exchanging names and numbers and contacts none of that they're kind of just going off the vibes and she kisses him and then something happens so she leaves him again no names exchanged no numbers none of that so Wes has gone he's like speaking to his brothers his friends about this mystery woman that he knows nothing about but it's like he can't stop thinking about her whereas Ada is like on one hand it's like she does really like the dude but she's already had it in her mind that she's never gonna see him again and she needs to put like work at the forefront she needs to get herself together because she came to Wyoming for a job she's gonna do the job why does homegirl go to do the job and he's there, Wes. So Wes is happy, obviously, because he's been thinking about her. This is the dream girl and all of that. Whereas Ada is conflicted because he's now her boss. Again, her priority is to do her job and she doesn't want to have any fraternizing going on. She wants to get her job done. So while Wes is literally jumping through hoops he's trying to win her over he's trying to get in you know good graces so they can do something Ada is like we can't I'm here for a job I don't want to be in this crosshairs and as mentioned like Ada was previously married and that situation is addressed further in the book and that also plays a part in why she's kind of distancing from Wes as well like she's not trying to have a lot of baggage like she didn't get out type situation so they do have a bit of push and pull going on because they have moments where they're together and it's like I think for me Ada forgets about the you know him being the boss and then it dawns on her again and she pushes away so they do have a lot of push and pull but it's it's so cute and again it's like a quick y'all this is a really quick read I promise you it's a quick read you're gonna enjoy it love it the entire series and it is um this is also a brother series um but it's also like the ranch is called blue rebel ranch or rebel blue ranch so it's like not everyone is essentially a brother but like closely related type situation so good so cute I love it. See, this one only has three of five. This is actually the shortest book of all that I've recommended to y'all. But I'm telling you, be ready. The entire series is really, really good. I really enjoy them. I'm looking forward to the third book so bad because I'm, I've heard good things about it. Like some people have already received arcs and they've already They've given me enough that I want the third book now. So I'm looking forward to it to continue this. And hopefully it's not the end of the series because I do really enjoy the series as well. So there we have it. Those are all of my country cowboys, small town <laughs> romances to recommend uh, this time around, which I would definitely do again, but I feel like a handful of some of the country cowboy small town romances that I do read. I don't have physical copies of all of them and when I do these types of videos I do like to have physical copies so I can show y'all because uh, that's like the beauty of it. So definitely we'll probably do another one of these. I'm always open to recommendations because like I say I eat it up. It doesn't take about much. If it seems like it's going to be good vibes I'll read it. It's just that simple. So until the next time we're sat here and I'm recommending books or I'm giving you a book haul, which I actually haven't done in a really long time. So I don't know. So 
I will see y'all next time, whatever video that's gonna be. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button down below. Peace and blessings, my loves.